This is a mechanism of disease map for infectious esophagitis. I'll be talking about the etiology, the pathophysiology, the pharmacology, and the manifestations of infectious esophagitis. As in all of these flowcharts, each of these bubbles is color-coded according to this legend up here. And first, a quick definition for infectious esophagitis. It's when you have inflammation of the esophagus caused by a microbial infection. Now this typically only happens in patients that are immunosuppressed or that have some other immune system deficit. So there are a few things that can cause this. Infectious esophagitis is most commonly associated with HIV and AIDS, particularly when the CD4 count drops below 200. So that's the most common association. Of course, you can also be immunosuppressed from chronic kidney disease, specifically in patients with dialysis that are on chronic dialysis. Organ and graft transplant patients are also immunosuppressed, um, partially from the medications that we give them to prevent rejection of the organ. And lastly, there are various malignancies that can cause immunosuppression and immune deficits, both from the malignancies themselves and from the chemotherapies that we give to treat those malignancies. Now, the, once you are immunosuppressed, you can be infected by a variety of microbes and um, they can all affect the esophagus, which is what we're gonna talk about now. Um, cytomegalovirus is one of the common ones. Herpes simplex, HSV1, um, more commonly, is another of the common microbes infecting the esophagus. And fungal infections with Canada species are the last of the most common ones. You can also have bacterial infections with actinomyces species and mycobacteria. Those are less common. You can also have parasitic infections of the esophagus, Chagas disease and Toxoplasma gondii, also less common. We're going to focus on these top three here, CMV, cytomegalovirus, herpes, and candida esophagitis. Now the presentation, the manifestations for these um, three most common causes are all similar in this regard. They all have odynophagia, they all have dysphagia, patient can have heartburn and regurgitation, patient can have chest pain, specifically a retrosternal chest pain right along the middle, right where your esophagus is, and patients can also have fever. So um, pain with swallowing and difficulty swallowing, odynophagia and dysphagia are probably the most common symptoms. So because they all present that same way, how exactly are you gonna differentiate them? That's gonna come down to endoscopy and histology. So you're gonna end up scoping them, doing an EGD, um, looking inside their esophagus, and maybe taking a sample and sending it to the pathology lab. For cytomegalovirus esophagitis, patient will have mucosal erosions and linear ulcers in the proximal esophagus. On histology, they'll have basophilic inclusions and macrophage aggregates. This differs from herpes esophagitis, where the patient will have superficial punched out ulcers in the distal esophagus. So let's focus on how this is different from the CMV variant. In CMV, there are linear ulcers and in the proximal esophagus. In herpes simplex, they're kind of, I would I'd think of them as kind of rounder, superficial in the distal esophagus. So this one is round, superficial, and in the distal esophagus. This one is linear um, and in the proximal esophagus. On histology for herpes, you'll have eosinophilic CAUDA inclusions, Cowdery A inclusions, um, and also multinucleated giant cells. So differentiate the multinucleated giant cells from the macrophage aggregates between HSV and CMV. Lastly, for the candidal um, case, you'll have on endoscopy a white yellowish adherent plaque. This is called pseudomembranes. On histology, you'll see pseudohyphae with visible spores. So this is very characteristic for a fungal infection, pseudohyphae with visible spores. And this um, white yellowish adherent plaque called pseudomembranes is also present in other candidal infections throughout the body. In fact, this candida infection is so characteristic that you can even see it on physical exam in some cases. You might see ulcer and thrush in the oral mucosa without having to actually scope the patient. And in fact, that's usually enough to make the diagnosis. If you have a patient that's immunosuppressed, say you have a patient with AIDS with a CD4 count of 150, and you notice um, ulcers and thrush in their mouth, and they're complaining of difficulty swallowing and pain with swallowing, that's enough for a clinical diagnosis, and you can go ahead and treat them with your antifungals for candida esophagitis. First line for this is fluconazole. Alternative medications include echinocandins, which is another class of antifungal drugs. But start with fluconazole for this. 
Uh, let's go back up with the treatments. Acyclovir is what you would use to treat herpes simplex, and for cytomegalovirus, you use gancyclovir. Typically, you start with IV gancyclovir and then transition to oral valgancyclovir. Um, you can either do that regime or you can just treat them with foscarnet, which is another antiviral medication. This has been an overview of infectious esophagitis. I would really focus on these top three most common ones, CMV, HSV, and Candida, and be able to differentiate them based on these features and also know the treatment for all of them. I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.